In this video, we're going to look at how to write the electron configuration for an ion. If you haven't watched the original video on electron configuration, do that first. So let's say they give you Mg2+. It is now no longer an atom, it now has a charge, meaning it's gained or lost electrons, so the electron configuration will not be the same as Mg. So what I find helpful is to first write out the electron configuration for Mg, which is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. Now let's consider Mg2+. 2 plus. 2 plus has lost two electrons. So where am I going to lose these electrons from? They're always going to be coming out of the outermost shell, the valence shell, the ones that are furthest from the nucleus, because they'll be easiest to remove. So my highest shell is 3. I see a 3 in front. So I'm going to remove two electrons from the third energy level. So for Mg2+, I can just completely get rid of the 3s2, okay, and write 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. I've now changed the number of total electrons, 2 plus 2 plus 6. If I add up all the exponents, there's 10 electrons now. I've also changed the number of valence electrons. Um, in Mg, there were two valence electrons. Okay, now they are 6 because my second shell is now my outermost and there's 6 plus 2 electrons from the P and the S. Now, some people also like to write 3s0 to show that there's no electrons anymore in the 3s subshell. And if you want to do that, you can, though you don't have to. You can just get rid of that completely. Okay, so there's Mg2+. I erased the atom now. Let's consider another one. Let's consider something that forms a negative charge. So let's consider P3-. minus. Okay. Again, I find it helpful to write out the electron configuration of the atom. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5 is phosphorus. I'm sorry, 3p3 <laughs> is phosphorus. It has five valence electrons right now. So where am I going to end up adding electrons to? Because the 3 minus means I've gained electrons. Well, I'm going to add it to the valence shell, which is the third shell. Okay, 3s is already filled. 3p has three valence electrons in it, or three electrons in it. I can add more, okay? So instead of 3p3, p3 minus is p3, 6. Okay, and now I've taken on the same configuration as the nearest noble gas, which is argon. It now has eight valence electrons. What you're going to notice is that your main groups, meaning the S block and the P block, they're going to gain and lose electrons so that they do end up having the same configuration as a noble gas. That's actually why I decided to write the electron configuration long rather than abbreviated. You can absolutely write it an abbreviated electron configuration. Just make sure that, especially for the ones that lose electrons, you don't just write a noble gas in square brackets. So like for the last one, for Mg2+, don't just write, okay, that's NE in brackets, because that really shows no understanding of electron configuration. You can write it as HE, 2S2, 2P6, and that's fine. Now, let's take a look at the transition metals, because those are the ones that cause people some problems. So let's consider manganese MN. Okay. If I'm doing out manganese's abbreviation and now um, uh, electron configuration, and now I'll abbreviate so you can see I can do it this way too. Let's do AR in brackets, and that means I can start after AR, so I could do 4s2, 3d, and if I count d, I get to 5. Now, if I am forming, let's say, Mn2+, the 2 plus means I've lost electrons. Where should I be taking electrons from? Again, they should be coming from my valence shell or my outermost shell, the ones that are furthest from the nucleus. So if I look, what is the biggest number that I see in front? Well, the biggest number I see in front is 4. So the electrons are going to be coming out of the fourth energy level. So for my Mn2 plus, I can write it as Ar. 
and those four S electrons are completely gone now. So I could just write AR3D5. Some people like to write AR4S0,3D5, and that's totally fine. But make sure you're removing electrons from the outermost energy level first. Now let's say it was Mn3 plus that was being formed. Where can I take the other electrons from now? Well, once I remove the 4s, then any extra electrons can come out of 3d. So the 4s is gone completely, and I can write AR 3d4. What if it was Mn4 plus? Then it could be AR 3d3. Okay, so the moral of the story here is, again, you're always removing electrons from the outermost shell, and then any more that you need can then come from the D block, because the D is really an energy level back. Just a note as well, if you have something like, um, let's say, SN4+, or let's do SN2+, plus. okay? Um, let's consider SN's configuration first, the normal configuration of the atom, so let's do Sn2+. plus. So for Sn, if we abbreviate, okay, it would be Kr, and we would do 5s2, 4d10, 5p2. Now if it was an Sn with a 2 plus charge, where would I be taking electrons out of? Well, my fifth energy level is the highest, and I should take it out of P before taking it out of S, because the 5P are actually further from the nucleus than the 5S, so they'll be easier to remove. So SN2 plus would be KR, 5S2, 4D10. Then let's say it was SN4 plus. Now I can remove the electrons from the 5S. Because again, 5 is a higher number than 4, so the 5th energy level is further than the 4th. So it would just be Kr, 4d, 10. Okay, so the ions are pretty easy to do. It's just the transition metals. You have to remember to take them out of the highest energy level.